we tend to think of our sun as a stable, relatively unremarkable presence. It provides us with light, heat, and the basis for all life on Earth. For many, the prospect of it doing anything unexpected seems unthinkable. After all, the sun has been rising and setting in the exact same way for thousands of years. But will it remain like this forever? It's easy to forget that the sun is anything but stable. Although it might seem tame on a day-to-day -day basis, we should remember that this is a rotating ball of plasma, fueled by immensely powerful nuclear reactions at its core. The truth is that the sun has gone through immense changes in the past, and it will do so again. These changes can be incredibly violent, and there is evidence to suggest that solar outbursts have destroyed entire human civilizations in the distant past. So what happens when the sun decides to remind the Earth just how powerful it really is? Will we be ready? What will happen to our civilization? And how can we survive? Our planet is protected by our geomagnetic sphere. If it wasn't for this magnetic force field, solar flares and solar radiation would cause tremendous damage to our planet. So what happens when the geomagnetic field weakens? Things can get pretty bad for life on Earth, especially when this coincides with a major solar outburst. Pole shifts or pole reversals can cause the geomagnetic field to weaken considerably. Scientists know that the poles have reversed many times in the past, and our geomagnetic field is currently going through a period of weakening. Even NASA's official website states that some scientists believe that the geomagnetic field might completely decay within the next 1,000 years or so. NASA also talks about geomagnetic excursions on its website. These are far more frequent, shorter-lived periods of geomagnetic instability that typically only last a few thousand years. One of the more recent excursions was the Lashamps event, which involved the poles reversing and flipping back to their original positions in a relatively short period of time. It's important to note that nobody really knows how often these events occur, as our current civilization hasn't been around long enough to accurately record pole shifts. In fact, scientists aren't even sure what causes geomagnetic disturbances of this magnitude, and there are theories involving asteroid impacts plate tectonics, and changes within the Earth's inner and outer core. The Earth's poles are currently moving, and they are drifting away from their original positions faster and faster with each passing day. The North Pole has been moving at about 55 kilometers per year. It is now moving relatively quickly towards Siberia. The South Magnetic Pole is also moving at a considerable pace, and is currently located in open water outside of the continent of Antarctica. Although the South Magnetic Pole isn't moving as quickly as its northern counterpart, it's further away from its true pole. While the Magnetic North Pole is 380 miles away from the true pole, the Magnetic South Pole is over 1,800 miles away from the true south. This means that the two poles are behaving very differently from one another, and they are not moving in opposite directions at the same speed. If you were to draw a line through Earth from one magnetic pole to the other, the line would be quite lopsided. This suggests that the Earth might be approaching a geomagnetic reversal or excursion. If this occurs, the planet would be extremely vulnerable to solar activity. So could the Sun hit us with a major solar storm at this precise moment? Various scientists have determined that over the past few decades, the Sun has been enjoying a relatively cool period. That being said, scientists also understand that the sun is getting gradually warmer. In about a billion years, the Earth will be too hot to sustain life. The issue is that we haven't been around long enough to track solar cycles. Currently, scientists have established an 11-year system that consists of solar maximums and minimums. We also have a longer 88-year cycle called the Gleisberg cycle. In addition, there's a Seuss de Vries cycle lasting 200 years and a Halstatt cycle lasting 2,400 years. The truth is that the Sun goes through intricate cycles that we don't fully understand. Although a cycle of 2,400 years might sound like a long time, it's really nothing more than a blink when you consider the Sun is 5 billion years old. 
there could be longer cycles that we're not fully aware of, simply because the last civilizations that witnessed these cycles were wiped out by a major solar storm. Speaking of solar storms, what exactly happens when our star suddenly wakes up and decides to remind us how small and insignificant we really are? A recent study found that one of the worst solar storms in recent Earth history occurred about 10 to 12,000 years ago, and our surface was bombarded with radioactive isotropes. These isotropes were found in ice cores taken from Greenland. Scientists were shocked to discover that this major solar outburst had occurred during a time that the sun was supposed to be going through a quiet period. This teaches us a lesson that we should have known all along. The sun is unpredictable. The biggest solar storm in recorded history was back in 1859, and it is known as the Carrington Event. Colorado residents woke up to see a bright red sky with swirling green shapes at 4 a.m. This tremendous geomagnetic storm completely overwhelmed the telegraph system. Sparks flew, telegraph operators were burned, and the electrical currents went haywire. 130 years later, a coronal mass ejection, just 20% as strong as the Carrington event, completely took out the power grid in Quebec, leaving millions of people without power. Again, bright auroral lights were reported. In addition, a large transformer at a New Jersey power plant literally melted, and it took six months to fix the damage. Keep in mind that the Carrington event occurred during a time when the electrical grid was relatively primitive. If a storm of that magnitude occurred today, our entire way of life would be gone in an instant. Satellites would be ripped out of orbit, transformers would overload, and the internet would go dark. Billions of people would be without power, and most of the population would probably starve before the grid could be fully repaired. The truth is that solar storms could be even more life-changing for humanity, especially if our geomagnetic field is weak during the next major coronal mass ejection. In fact, there's evidence that suggests entire civilizations have been wiped out by solar outbursts in the past. One of the leading figures in this line of research is Dr. Robert Scotch, a geologist who first became known for proving the Egyptian Sphinx is much older than originally believed. Dr. Scotch continues to study the relationship between geology and ancient civilizations. Like many others, he believes that a massive, catastrophic event caused major changes for people in the past, and that these changes were felt by cultures around the globe. Although he initially believed that this destructive event was an asteroid impact, he had shifted his hypothesis towards a period of sudden, violent solar activity and there's considerable evidence to back up this claim. One of the most interesting archaeological discoveries in recent years has been Gobekli Tepe, a stone monument in Turkey dating back 13,000 years. Prior to this discovery, historians believed that humans were simple hunter-gatherers during this time, and that civilization began roughly six to 7,000 years ago. Gobekli Tepe shows us that human civilization is actually much, much older than we originally thought. Even more interesting is the fact that the stone monument seems to have been severely damaged by some kind of climactic event. Large, heavy stone slabs were found cracked and crumbled. Some were lying face down, while others have been hastily propped back up. The entire site of Gobekli Tepe was buried by its creators before being abandoned, almost as if they didn't want it to be damaged any further. But could a solar storm really be powerful enough to damage stone monuments? Dr. Scotch believes so, and he has pointed to vitrified rock dating back to the same time period as Gobekli Tepe. Vitrification is when rock is melted by plasma discharges, turning it into glass. Scotch also states that powerful CMEs could literally burn the surface and that plasma phenomena, like powerful lightning, might have been capable of damaging stone structures like Gobekli Tepe. We know that during the time of this destruction, the world was going through an incredible, unexplainable change. The Younger Dryas period suddenly ended within a space of just three years, and the Earth suddenly warmed after being in the middle of an ice age for thousands of years. Some believe that the shift from an ice age to a warm period occurred within the space of just a few weeks, possibly overnight. Other than a powerful solar event, what else could have caused such a major abrupt change in the Earth's temperatures? On his website, Scotch writes, Plasma hitting the surface of the Earth could heat and fuse rock. 
incinerate flammable materials, melt ice caps, vaporize shallow bodies of water creating an extended deluge of rain, and send the climate into a warming spell. The release of pressure that follows the melting of thousands of meters thick ice sheets can induce earthquakes and even cause hot rock under pressure to melt and erupt to the surface as volcanoes. During this period of complete mayhem, people would have been forced to shelter in caves or vast underground cities carved out of rock. When we look at cave paintings dating from this period, it quickly becomes clear that something extraordinary was being witnessed by these early climate refugees. The cave painting at this time took on strange abstract shapes that seemed to represent stick figures, spirals, and ladders. But here is the really weird thing. These shapes were being painted by cave dwellers across the entire planet. A plasma physicist named Dr. Peratt thinks he knows why. Everyone around the globe was looking up at the sky and seeing the same thing. You see, solar storms are likely to create very distinct shapes in the geomagnetic field that would be observable to humans. Unlike the wavy, vague lines of the aurora borealis, these shapes would be very clearly defined. Dr. Peratt had conducted experiments to determine what these shapes would look like, and the results are astounding. Just like the cave paintings, the plasma occurrences would appear as abstract stick figures, spirals, and connected circles. Gobekli Tepe also contains carvings and images that are very similar to these plasma occurrences. All of this suggests that humans have experienced a major solar event in the past that has destroyed entire civilizations. There is strong evidence to suggest that solar radiation can cause major changes in DNA. The link between UV radiation and cancer is clear. So what would happen to life on Earth if solar activity increased dramatically without a strong geomagnetic field to protect us? Mutation rates would likely soar, while some animals would likely develop cancers and die. Others may actually gain new traits and undergo considerable changes. Mainstream scientists today understand that ionizing radiation can contribute to the rate of evolution. During a period of intense cosmic radiation, animal life on the planet could go through a massive period of accelerated change. In other words, humans could actually evolve into a completely different species after being hit by a major solar storm of sufficient magnitude. Some would likely die from the radiation but others would gain new traits and forge a new path for a completely new society. It's impossible to remain hopeful about the future, even though there is strong evidence to suggest that solar events have wiped out ancient civilizations, humans are still here today. And that means that surviving these catastrophic events is possible. The most important thing to remember is that a catastrophic solar storm will probably hit us harder than any other past civilization. Because of our reliance on electricity and the internet, we need to be ready to adapt and return to a lifestyle more in tune with the planet. As long as we can rediscover old survival skills that were common in ancient times, there's no reason we can't survive and carry the torch into the future.